right? Outcomes over cost. So basically you want high outcomes, great outcomes, low cost on the bottom, the denominator that will give you high value. So that's the, you know, limit costs, better outcomes equals better value for care. Dr. Laith Jezrawi, thank you for joining me on Startup Health TV and on the podcast. I know you're uh, there at the hospital having a busy day, so thanks for carving out some time. Yeah, thank you for having me uh, today, and it's exciting to talk about some of the new innovations that we have in medicine, and particularly arthroscopy and sports medicine. Awesome. Just to set the stage, you're literally at the hospital. Did you, you just finished a, a procedure? Yeah, we started at 7.30 this morning, and uh, today we had some interesting cases, ranging from the last case was a cartilage transplant and a young kid who had sheared off his cartilage skiing, and we actually took a donor graft, someone mm -hmm. who had uh, passed away in the last two weeks, took his cartilage, he was an organ donor, and people don't think of the bones as an organ, but they are, you know, and the cartilage is very valuable. And so we were able to take a piece from this donor's knee and um, put it in uh, the recipient who had lost part of his cartilage while skiing. Hmm. And, uh, you know, now he's got new cartilage, so he won't have pain in his knee anymore. Yeah, I had never thought of a cartilage donor before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we also did an Achilles rupture today. So that's very common. People know Kobe Bryant tore his, you know, uh, Achilles. And so a similar basketball player tore it. We fixed it. Um, we had nice. a shoulder uh, case today where it was a weightlifter uh, with a specific condition where weightlifters get where they overuse or, or overstress one of the bones in the top of their shoulder. And so we went in there and cleaned up that bone. And then he also had a torn tendon that we fixed. Uh, let's see what else we did. Busy day. Uh, Wait, all today? Yeah. Yeah. They go wow. pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. They go, okay. They go, they go pretty quick. You, and set, then you, the, you, uh, you set them up and knock them down. Well, it's not, not like that there. <laughs> But uh, uh, we did a knee scope, a, a regular knee scope, and we're going to get into that, some of the innovations behind knee arthroscopy. Okay. But um, today I didn't have the wireless scope, and I know we're going to talk about that, but we used a regular scope. But knee scopes are one of the more common procedures that orthopedic surgeons do, and it involves using a camera that's connected essentially to a TV and then also a separate wire that connects to a light source. And through this camera that's about the size of a pencil, there's this heavy light that's shot through. So imagine a pencil, this light is shot through, and then also a wire that connects it to a TV screen so we can see what's at the tip, you know, of sure. this camera. And sure, that sure. tip of the camera, again, the size of a pencil, goes into the knee joint and we're able to look in there. We, we add some water in there that what we call insufflates the joint, makes it um, bigger and allows us to get around the knee. And then we're able to then insert instruments in there to debride meniscus, clean cartilage. So these are all things that we utilize the arthroscopy for. Today's case was a meniscus tear, but getting into the wireless arthroscopy, which is one of the newer innovations that we have in arthroscopy, is the idea of imagining not being tethered down with the camera to these wires and cords so that you can more freely move or uh, move around the patient and um, sure. be able to do what we need to do. So it, it's certainly <laughs> exciting for me. But the other thing is that I, why haven't we thought of this earlier? You know, all the technology that we have with wireless technology, everything's wireless that we haven't been able to really translate it into the operating room. And um, you know, it, you know, I've, I've learned about it. I've re read about it. And you know what? It's not that easy. There's a lot of, yeah. you know, challenges te technologically that had to be overcome um, to get us to where we are today. That's great. Let's level set. And for our uh, listeners and viewers, uh, we're talking about a, a particular device created by a company called Lazarite that is part of the Startup Health portfolio. And I wanted to talk to you because you are the surgeon or and type of surgeon that would that would use this uh, this arthro free is what I believe it's called in the actual OR. So I wanted to talk to a surgeon and not just talk to a founder about what they've built in their vision, but how does this wireless uh, device work in the OR? Why was it necessary? So you started us down that path, 
And um, tell me just sort of at the outset what your relationship is with Lazarite. Yeah, so la- initially when my my initial relation with Lazarite, I was not on their board. This was purely uh, sort of a, a hobby of mine. I like to do research and they had approached me about looking into their product. And I said, this is a very, this is a fascinating thing. And this is, this was started, this relationship started about three years ago okay. where we started. And it's like with anything you create, we started in the lab and we worked on cadavers and we worked with some of their prototypes. And um, yeah, I, I did not have any relationship. I was not paid. It was just for the the pure, you know, we're all little geeks in terms of technology. And I, I just, I love arthroscopy. I love sports medicine. And, and the the thing that they were developing at the time, I thought was very cool. So we, we, we had it tested by our surgeons here at NYU. Uh, there was about 12 of us. And we all looked at it. And that's where it started. And that's where we started to make some tweaks, some innovations to it. But the thing that drew us to it initially was the fact that we didn't need to have a light box, a light cable connecting to the scope. It was now run by a very very powerful battery that was attached to the scope itself. So that eliminated one cable that had to be thrown off the table from the sterile field to the non-sterile field. And and that's that's always an issue, sterility in the OR. And we were like, well, that's a good innovation. We're limiting that passage of instrumentation from sterile to non-sterile. So that we thought was a very cool innovation. The second thing was now how do we get that image that we're seeing? Normally that's through a wired cable, like you connect an HDMI cable to Mm -hmm. your TV from your cable box. Well, they were able to figure out how to do it wirelessly. To transmit that image, uh, again, via a connection or a box on top of the TV, directly that would capture the scope images so a transmitter coming from the scope transferring the images over that box and then to put it on the tv for us so we can see it that's and two so, is that two separate cords or two cords together the the video two, and the no, light two separate cords okay so you've eliminated two cords i heard from somebody at lazarite a story about someone actually tripping over one and practically getting a concussion that's actually like a tripping hazard uh, that, that's certainly possible, you know, uh, with all the cords and depending on how you do it. I, I would say that that's that's rare. That's be, rare. That's rare. That would be, you know, that that would be almost uh, me exaggerating the benefits of. The sure. World. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. That answer. Uh, yeah. Before we get into the Arthur free and the specifics and we're going to look at a video and actually talk about how it works. Briefly, talk to me about innovation in the OR. Can I give us a state of. Uh, the operating room in your mind, we've got we've got wired devices that probably should be wireless, like we're talking about now. Um, do you feel like the OR is in need of a lot of upgrades? Kind of, kind of, where are we at in in the evolution of the OR? So it, it's interesting, you know, when when we first started down this road in arthroscopy uh, in the seventies and eighties, it w- was simply. Uh, camera that you didn't have a tv to look on you had to look through the actual lens and only one person could look at a time if you were lucky you had one of these things with that we had an extra attachment so it was imagine that you 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 couldn't look on a screen as Mm -hmm. arthroscopy has advanced and the instrumentations have advanced we went to you know stronger light sources but still all wired you know either via a cord a light cord or a wired cord connecting to a TV. But we were able to get the job done. Now, in the OR, things happen every five to 10 years where major upgrades happen. And one of the things over the last five years has been integration, right? All the technology we have, whether it's our MRIs being put up on a screen, our X-rays, the patient's history and information, our ability to access things on the internet that we need if we need in the OR. So from from our standpoint, there's a lot of things going on in the OR. So for me, we're a wireless technology. We have wireless internet, all this stuff's out there. So for me, this was a logical next step 
And anytime you can make things less cluttery in the OR, there's plenty yeah. of stuff in the OR. I think it's certainly a step in the right direction. Now, is this the be all and end all? No, it's a step in the right direction. And as we begin to consider how we, you know, untether ourselves from other things that the scope holds us off. One of the things is the water source. That's still connect via, you know, uh, via tubing. And that's something that certainly is open for innovation as well. But the, the great thing about getting rid of those two wires, you don't realize it until they're gone, mm. how you there's a tremendous freedom associated with that. Is it going to change our outcomes in our patients? I don't think it's going to change them dramatically. It's it's about making the surgeon's life easier, potentially in the OR, and also potentially speeding up the case a little bit in the OR. So the turnover time is less. Sure. There's less to process and less to make sterile. And there's also less connections to get the case started. So you're dumping these wires off, connecting them. Now we don't have to do that. If you were thinking more generally about the operating room and the how state of the art the average operating room is. Here we're talking about making something wireless and we're used to wireless gadgets in every other part of our lives. And so that makes surgery seem slightly outdated or that the tools we have are in need of an upgrade. What would you say is sort of the state of the art right now speaking at a macro level? Well, I, I would say the answer to that is whatever your technology in the OR, it has to be the best. So if the best right, is 4K visualization on the screen, but you could only achieve 4K via a wire, then we're going to go with that probably for our patient's sake, right. you know? So the fact that we're behind in, in the OR, it's not so much that we're behind, it's that the standard is set at such a high level that you may get, okay, you have your wireless in your home and your internet speed's pretty good. Whatever sometimes, we do, sometimes. You know, our, we have, you know, lives are on the line and yeah. we have patients, we're responsible for their outcomes and their care. So it has to be the best. So yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why maybe the technology has lagged a little behind because it takes a lot more to get it to that high grade level uh, and to put in the OR and it's, it's expensive, you know, yeah. making changes in the OR, it involves, you got to change a lot of things at the same time. And and that is difficult sometimes, financially. Okay. Yep. Okay. G great answer. Um, so part of the reason why I brought you here today is that I want to show you a video of the Arthro Free in action and get a play-by-play -play since you know what we're looking at. So I'm going to pull right. it up on the screen and you are just going to talk over it and tell me to pause and I'll pause um, and you can, you can share whatever you'd like to share uh, as we go through it. Let me know when you can see it. All right, there, there's the device. There's the shaver to the right. So that's one of the things that remain uh, connected via uh, a power source. Now, that's something that could easily be converted to a battery-powered system. So mm. that's something that's for sure down the line. That's another untethering that we need to have where that makes perfect sense. It should be powered by a battery rather than a box and a cable uh, You know that gives us power. All right. So that's the Artho Free right there. There's the battery right next to it. And you can see there the camera. There's the, I talked to you about the pencil scope. Here's the knee. We're inserting the scope in there. You can see the battery that's connected uh, on the top there. Uh, my hand's there holding the scope. And then there's that uh, sort of egg-shaped uh, silver thing. That's the battery power. Got it. So this gentleman had twisted his knee. He was our first patient agreeing to the us to utilize this um, wireless device. So this is me just showing the meniscus tear on the screen to the staff that's there. And then now we're looking as the knee, you see me, I'm in the knee, I'm inserting an instrument to start shaving. This is showing some of the ergonomics, uh, you know, of me holding the scope. I hold it like a regular wired scope. The only difference with this is you can, you have that silver thing, which is not on a regular scope because that's the light source. Then the shaver is in my left hand. 
Question, um, without having a wire coming out the back, does it change your dexterity? That's a great question. I, it just makes you, my ability of my hand to move around the entire uh, circumference of the scope thing, it makes that a lot easier because nothing's in the way. Uh, that makes sense. That's me just holding the leg. You can keep going. We'll get a shot of what it looks like inside. And they're just showing the, uh, there's a lot of focus here on the um, the actual instruments. This is a biter in my left hand that's going into the knee, biting the meniscus out. And again, they're just showing the scope. That's a probe, probing the residual meniscus. And that's me holding the leg, completing the arthroscopy. There's a, uh, I'm just localizing again with the needle, positioning and, and looking at the meniscus. Here's again me probing. Maybe we'll get a shot soon of the uh, what's going on inside the knee. This is mostly the art, uh, showing the device itself. There's a shaver again. Now there's a shot of the meniscus. That's the, his undersurface tear. You can see the shaver, that metal thing coming in. And you can see uh, on the top of the screen, that's the box that's getting the wireless feed from the scope. That's feeding it to the box that then feeds the picture to the uh tv screen go ahead and the and the brightness and the battery that's for the device so you feel confident yeah well no the say it again oh so i'm looking at the battery power there is oh that that's the... the light source to the right okay the battery power i think is to the upper left you got about an hour and a half of battery battery time and if that runs out you just get another battery that's the okay point. okay so you can see that's the undersurface tear that's his meniscus, so I'm cleaning that up. And these are all the buttons that allow me to control my zoom, just like a regular camera. Did they make any improvements, any small ergonomic improvements on the scope itself, or is it really just the wireless nature? I would just say it's the wireless nature, you okay. know, of it. Uh, the the since doing this first case, they have there have been improvements in terms of picture quality. Uh, and, uh, in terms of the lag, you would think there would be a major lag going from the wireless technology. And there really isn't, it's, mm. they've done a nice job in what we call seeing it real time. It'd be hard to do surgery on a picture that's lagging behind. So that yeah. was a key, uh, component, uh, that I think they were able to overcome that, which I thought was great. I would say it would be almost, almost impossible to do it to do it well yeah if there's a lag it's weird and this is just me that probably wrapping up at you know towards the end and i think that's the end of the that's video. it that's it thanks yeah. um i saw i saw one um i saw one moment that showcased possibly residents uh folks who were wa watching were there, were right. there stu so, students yeah there so we have a big research team and and he was that individual was part of the first research he was the first person that not only are we testing the device out but we're also measuring doing metrics measuring time for turnover time for the surgery patient in and out of the or so all these little things to see if we're saving time utilizing this device we also have a a questionnaire about picture quality you know, uh, freezing of the of the the picture, all these questions, and they go into the database of the sixty patients that we've done, and now we're analyzing the data. To, yeah. We compared it thirty with the wireless, thirty with the uh, uh, regular scope. When I saw that younger physician, I just couldn't help but think about sort of the generational shift in terms of how we think about technology and the acceptance of technology. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on how residents are thinking about, okay, how do we upgrade the OR? What are ways we can incorporate new, uh, innovative tools into the OR? Yeah, the, there... the beauty of the beauty of medicine is that, and then, well, the beauty of life is that we get old and that there's a new generation that comes in and they, this generation now is more technologically savvy than we were. 
the younger generation is is, is definitely like that, and I and I expect a lot from them. You know, certainly when we talk a a, a lot about these things in, in our research meetings, they do give us a perspective about what's out there technologically that maybe we can start bringing into the OR. So it's great to have that younger generation come in and help us with these newer ideas and and bridging that gap. Now, I'm not that old, but uh, I'm in my 50s. But the nice thing about it is with them around, it's it's great to it's great because you make sure you're not missing out on anything and you bring up these ideas to them and they'll come up with a very simple thing. Well, why isn't this being done? And we're like, that's a great idea. Let's look into that. I love it. What's the process of bringing innovative tools or models or even just strategies into the OR? It's a great question. We have a new products committee. So the new products committee consists of about six to eight people. Um, and they range from uh, division chiefs for each of the divisions, as well as leaders from nursing, leaders from purchasing. And when the item is presented, there's several questions that are asked. Is it safe for the patient? That's no, that's number one. Nothing comes into the hospital if it's not safe. Is it cost efficient? Two. Okay. And uh, the third thing, is there another item that's currently there that's doing the same thing? So why are we going to bring it in if it's duplicating something we have already? So those are kind of the questions we ask um, and whether it's worth it. Now, sometimes we bring in expensive items because there's nothing like that. And we want to improve our patient care by having the best technology or items available. So we bring it in. But again, it's all about providing our patients with the best care possible with the best technology possible. If you could snap your fingers and have a founder from a startup pitch you a product or idea for the OR tomorrow, what would you want to hear? The, the pitch, and it's something that I joke around with one of my colleagues, that we came up with this idea when we were medical, not medical students, residents, that a lot of what we do in orthopedics is about either bringing tissues together, trying to get things to heal, trying to get things um, to meld together. So our, our, and we're doing this biologically. So my feeling is in the future, we'll have some type of device and you can call it a wand. We call it the bio weld machine or bio weld. So that we're welding tissues together in an organic way with a wand that's able, instead of suturing things together, is able to organically take a tear, the meniscus on one side and the meniscus on this side, and is able to weld them together biologically. Mm. And why is that important? You immediately get superior biomechanical strength by creating new tissue immediately, bridging that gap. And, and second, you don't have to worry about the sutures or implanting sutures. You have this wand that's welding the tissue together. That's, I, bio that's well. what I want I love pitched it. to me, and uh, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for that person. All right, I'm going on a search. Okay, last question for you. It's, um, g- given that committee you mentioned, what would be your piece of advice to a founder to speed up the process of the uptake from a hospital um, to to pitch in a way that the committee will will listen and hear what they have to say and, and not sort of get, uh, I don't know, any red flags slow them down? Yeah, it's the three things, right? That it's the number one is that it can clinically, it it improves, it's a clinical improvement on what we currently have. So this wireless technology is an improvement. It eliminates wires. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the cost, right? You you don't want something that's so cost prohibitive that it's ridiculous. The hospital is going to go bankrupt buying them. So that's the second thing. It has to be economically savvy. It's got to be, you know, worth the the bang for the buck and look don't get me wrong there's some incredible things that we buy through the new products committee that are incredibly expensive but they have a clinical value and that's the you know the the key value right is um right the the values defined as cost over you know outcomes right so you know uh 
I think now, I'm just make sure I get that. I'm getting yeah, that yeah. <laughs> now, now, uh, ta now, tactically, I'm I'm more thinking about how do you get something into the right hands because sometimes you've got an amazing product and you still can't get it to the committee. Um, it, you know, you don't have an internal champion. You're pitching it the wrong way. Do you have any pieces of tactical advice about succeeding if if you've got those three things checked? They've got to, you know, in, in the case of Lazarite, there was a person that was connected to our hospital that made the connection. And I think you, you, it's a big, it, you're right. It's, that's the challenge. They, they were fortunate enough to have a relationship with someone who knew, uh, you know, a lot of us in the hospital. Not yeah. many people are so fortunate. I think at the annual meetings, they're at the, you know, these new products, they can get a booth where orthopedic surgeons are, are walking. And, um, you know, that, that certainly, uh, they can get showcased there. Getting back to my thing, it was um, value equals outcomes, uh, sorry, cost over, uh, uh, sorry, outcomes over cost. So basically you want high outcomes, great outcomes, low cost on the bottom, the denominator that will give you high value. So that's the, you know, limit costs, better outcomes equals better value for care. And find that champion on the inside. Do that yes. good old good old fashioned trade show marketing. Make sure you've got surgeons in liking it, talking about it, all that good stuff. Right. Awesome, Doctor Jez Rowley. That's the time that we have. Thanks you. Thank you for walking us through that video, helping us understand the physician side of this, so that we can understand uh, how the OR is getting upgraded and and how we're we're moving into the future. Thanks, Logan. Have a great day. All right. You too. Take care. Be well. A quick word about this show, in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.